The Kutis Sikha is Chelech of Aleph, volume 21, the second Sikha of a Parsim of Sishalach. In this Sikha, the Rebbe will explain the idea of Se'uda Shlishis, the third meal in Shabbos, that's in the afternoon after Mincha, ideally, and also the reason for Minik Chabad as it is. Also, the, we'll have a great insight on what is to be expected and what is the idea of Oilom Haba, literally the world to come, what's going to be after Mashiach comes. As an introduction, just to familiar, familiarize ourselves with several points, several key points in the Sikha, bread versus Mizoinus. Mizoinus means anything that's made from the five grains, albeit it's not bread. Bread is Amoitzi, Mizoinus, as I said, is the Bracha Barimene and Mizoinus. As far as uh, constituting a meal, ideally, whenever one has to have a meal, according to Halacha, Say, for example, on Shabbos, it has to be, uh, it has to be done, it has to be fulfilled by means of eating bread. However, in some ways, one could also fulfill the obligation of, quote, a meal by eating some mezainus, something made of the five grains. A classical example would be when you make Kiddush on Shabbos, you have to have Kiddush b'makim se'uda. It has to be in the place of where your meal is actually taking place. Well, if you eat some mezainus, that's counted and the, and the um, Kiddush takes effect. Another thing to familiarize ourselves with is the concept of Raiva the Raivin, which basically is the heightened level of spirituality on Shabbos afternoon, towards the end of Shabbos, when it's considered to be the most spiritual, the most holy part of Shabbos, as described in the Zohar, and it's called Raiva the Raivin. We won't get into the details. Another thing, Yom Kippur. We know that in Yom Kippur, the Torah forbids us to eat or drink anything. What is the reason for our, for it, as explained in Chassidus? You see, Yom Kippur is such a high point of Kedusha, of revealed holiness. It is such a high point that we, meaning even those of us physically alive, are not, we don't, we don't need to rely on, we don't need to count on the sustenance the nutrients that we would typically get from food in order to keep body and soul together, rather we get it from a much higher source, from a spiritual source. And that is the reason why we're not allowed to eat Ayim Kippur. So let's get into the actual Sikha. On the verse, on the Pasuk, in chapter 16, verse 25, where Moshe Rabbeinu, as he was approached by the Jews, and they said, hey, we have our manat today, we don't have any, what do we do? Should we eat it or not? Because remember, previously they were, instructed about the prohibition of not leaving anything over for the next day and certainly not eating from it if it was left over. And here they have all their food intact on Shabbos morning. They don't know what to do. So Moshe says to them, quote, Eat it today. Because it's Shabbos today to Hashem. Today you will not find it in the field. So he said three times the word Hayoim today. And from here the Chazal, our sages learned that there is a mitzvah of eating three suudas. Because in, re, in relation to the idea of eating, to the question that was before him, he said three times the word Hayoim. So on this day there is a mitzvah to eat three meals. Now even though typically, as we said in the introduction, what constitutes a suuda? What is the legal status of a se'uda according to halacha when it's done with bread? But yet, we find in Shulchan Aruch that there's actually a machlekas in the sources, in the paiskim, in the halachic authorities when it comes to this third extra meal. There is, of course, the, obviously the opinion that says, no, you must do it to fulfill your obligation of this meal by means of eating bread. However, there is another opinion that says you can also fulfill this obligation by eating any kinds of mezainas, like I said in the introduction, um, things that are made from the five grains. Then, there are those that are even more lenient, and they say that you can fulfill it by eating things that typically are eaten with bread, like some meat or some fish, something that you malafes as a paspain. And then there is an even more lenient opinion, the most lenient opinion, that you don't have to eat any of the above, Rather, just to eat anything, something, even like fruits or something, which typically never, ever constitutes a meal and doesn't even come necessarily in a meal. Now, the Alter Rebbe in his Shulchan Aruch, when he brings all these opinions, after he quotes all of them, he says, quote, 
and you cannot rely on this at all. Only if there is no other way out, meaning only if there's, it's not possible in any other manner. For example, if somebody is so full that if he eats, he's going to feel bad. If he eats, it's actually going to be a detriment. It's not going to be a pleasure. Then he's not obligated to eat this meal. So in short, al Rebbe seems to be of the opinion that you must fulfill it in the most stringent manner. That's the first opinion, which is to eat bread. Yet, says the Rebbe, it's well known the custom of our Rebbes, Rabbi Seinu Nisieinu, all the Chabad Rebbes, that in most cases, means almost all the times, Ruba de Ruba, they would not eat bread in this meal. Rather, they would just fulfill the obligation by eating something small, maybe fruit or something. Now, what is the reason for this? What is, what is really the reason behind this? Since the third meal on Shabbos, the Su'udah Shlishi is, is derived from where? From the words in the Pasuk that say, Hayoim loy, today, loy sim to today not, so there's a certain negative to it, meaning, Hashem, he says, you will not find it in the fields, therefore it's more fitting that this Su'udah should reflect this idea of the negating of not finding, of not finding the bread, that's the man at the time, by not eating bread. That is the reason that's given. An explanation now according to Hasidus, meaning in a little deeper, more esoteric manner, that the third meal, the third meal represents, is symbolic of the ultimate time, that is the Shabbos Shela Asid Lavoy. That in the future, when Mashiach comes, it will be Yom Shekule Shabbos. And as the Gemara says, about this time, about this era, when Mashiach will come, quote, Ein boy lo yachil lo that in this time is a time that there's no eating and no drinking. It's not about eating and drinking. In other words, what does this really mean? Well, we're going we're gonna to starve to death? No, on the contrary. That the energy, the nutrition, the feeding of a yid, of our bodies will come from a higher aspect, from the aspect of ayin. Since this is the case, and this time of the day of Shabbos, Raiva the Raivan, and this meal is representative of that, is symbolic of that, therefore, according to Chassidus, it makes sense that it's fitting to represent it in a likewise manner, that you should not eat a regular meal, that you should not eat a, a, a bread, and that's why they, our Rebbe has expressed this meal by not eating any, uh, any bread, just um, eating something small. Now, the Rebbe says that it's obvious, we know, that our holy Torah, both the Nigla of the Torah and the Pnimis of Torah, the revealed part and the esoteric part, are all one. It's all one seamless Torah. And therefore it's understood that when you have a minig, that's a Hasidic minig, it's a minig according to Hasidus, it's not possible that it should be in a manner that halachically it's only a kula, it's only a leniency, or it's like a, it's a, it's a dievet. It's like, you know, kind of like, kind of like, okay, you can, it's like you can get away with it or some kind of loophole. But rather, it has to be that if you have a minig of pichsidis, that it's a lechatchila. This is the ideal manner in which to do it. And if so, the question, the question begs itself, we need to understand, it's indeed so, that according to Pnimi Satoida, according to chsidis, the third meal corresponds to the asid lava and therefore is beyond the aspect of actual eating, and this is the reason not to eat. But the fact is that according to halacha, it seems that, it, that it's a kula, that it's only a leniency. In other words, how do we reconcile this? And in fact, the Alter Rebbe himself, who is the founder of the Chabad Hasidis, he says in halacha, quote, and the ain lismoy chazek lala, you cannot rely on this at all. Meaning that you have to eat bread. So how do we reconcile the two? Says the Rebbe, the answer lies halachically, in another halacha that al Rebbe brings, if you look in Simon Reish Peiches, chapter 288, Sif Beis, paragraph 2, over there he says that the mitzvah of eating three meals on Shabbos is only, meaning is exclusively, not for the purpose of eating, but for the purpose of pleasure. Just to give you an example where 
my own example, where sometimes the mitzvah is for the exclusive purpose of eating, on the night of Pesach, there is an obligation, there is a mitzvah to eat matzah. It has nothing to do with pleasure. Even if you don't enjoy it, you have to force yourself to eat a kezayis and matzah. So says the Alter Rebbe that the status, meaning that the whole gather of the mitzvah of eating on Shabbos is because of oinik. That's the essence of the mitzvah. And therefore, the emphasis is not so much on the bread of, that you're eating, but rather on the pleasure. And according to this, it comes out that if somebody should have, for whatever reason, distress or discomfort in eating, then not only is he, quote, exempt from eating, but in fact, he has an obligation not to eat. For example, somebody who, for whatever reason, if he eats, he's going to feel bad. He's, he just, he's not feeling well. And when he eats, it's going to make him more sick. So not only he's exempt from eating, he's not allowed to eat on Shabbos because his eating is not going to bring him oinik. And since this is so, when it comes to the fact if you should eat or not, says the Rebbe, that means this idea that when it's not pleasure for you, then you're exempt from eating, says the Rebbe, you can apply this too to not only if you should eat or not, but also to what you need to eat and what you don't need to eat. In other words, what you're going to eat if it's going to bring you pleasure or not. In other words, if you have some re- for some reason, you're going to have distress or discomfort from eating bread, then the idea is that lechatchila, the obligation of eating bread, does not apply to you. Not that you're exempt from it. It just never applies to you. You have no obligation to eat bread. You have an obligation not to eat bread. Okay, and if you go and eat bread, not only you didn't do a mitzvah, but you did the opposite. According to this, we can explain that the fact that lechatchila, that means that ideally, as we said, the first opinion in the mitzvah of of Sudesh, of, of, Sudesh Lishis, of this third meal, that there's an obligation to eat bread. In other words, why is it there at all? This is only when the person feels pleasure. Only when, he, however, if the person should not feel pleasure in eating bre- in eating bread, why? Because the person is privy to this concept that in this time of the day, this meal corresponds to la'asid lavoi, to the idea of hayoyim loy, that today not, that the idea of eating and drinking does not really, not only does not really, it does not at all have any shaykhs to this, then for this person, it's actually painful to eat. For this person, it's discomfort. By the way, similar to the idea of Yom Kippur. What happens in Yom Kippur? Why don't we eat? Because we're connected to a higher source of spirituality, a higher source of of, of uh, spiritual energy, and thus there's no eating and drinking. So for this person, it's actually painful to eat, and therefore, like I said, just repeating, he doesn't have the obligation at all to eat. And Adarabha, for him, it becomes a Hidur mitzvah. In other words, for him, it becomes the ideal way to perform this mitzvah by not eating. It says the Rebbe, this is perhaps the reason why the Rebbe's, all our Chabad Rebbe's, would only eat something small, not bread at all, but Hasidim who are mikusher to the Rebbe, they learn their Torah, and they go in their ways, so for them, it also would be painful to eat bread on Shabbos, it would be totally uncomfortable to eat bread on, on, on Shabbos, and this meal, and therefore, not only they're exempt from it, they're not obligated in this instance, but lechatchila, the only way for them to do the meal is by not eating bread and eating something else. However, says the Rebbe, one second, we have to still understand the following. If indeed in this time, the aspect of hayoyim loy, today no, meaning the higher aspect of Kedusha, shines, and therefore, you're not obligated to eat bread as we explained, Wait, then it should be like Yom Kippur. That we shouldn't eat at all. In other words, the rabbis made it a point, they didn't eat bread, but they did eat something. We taste something, something, a little fruit or something small. If the idea behind it is like we explained, that it's parallel to the, similar to the idea of Yom Kippur, the Hayyim Loi, that we derive our energy from the Ayin, well, if that's the case, we shouldn't eat at all. Why eat something? Now, it's true, says the Rebbe, there are places in Chassidus that explain that the reason why you need to eat something small is because this meal is only me'ein o'ilam haba. 
meaning it's only a sample of Olam Haba, but it's not totally, it's not uh, literally Olam Haba, and therefore you still, you know, we're not there yet, so it's similar, but it's not exactly the same, and therefore you have to eat it. But however, says the Rebbe, there is a Rishima, okay, there is like a, a, a note from the Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, who writes in the name of his father, the Rebbe Nishma Satan, the Rebbe Rashab, quote, the fact that Sa'uda Shlishis is, quote, Hayoim Loi, that's only that you don't have to eat bread. However, the Rebbe Rashab said, you do need to eat something, and then he brings what the Gemara brings, the Amar Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi said, Yehei Chel Ki Me'oichle Gimel Sudas, Shalish Sudas, that it should be my chilk, my portion in the world to come, meaning I should have that merit of those who do eat from the Shalish Sudas. So what do you see from this? From the fact that he says, you do have to eat something, and then he adds that, Rabbi Yaisi even says, wow, how special it is to eat something. It comes out that there is a Mila. There is an advantage. There is a purpose in eating something. Right? So we need to understand what is it. There is a purpose in eating something. You know, the Rebbe is emphasizing the question. Why is it not like in Kippur? There is a purpose in eating something. Moreover, we need to explain... The Rebbe Rasha brings Rabbi Yossi's expression, Rabbi Yossi saying, as a proof to his words. How exactly does this back up what the Rebbe Rasha says, that there is an obligation, there is a need to, to eat something? The answer is by first, of course, prefacing, understanding what exactly Rabbi Yossi said. What is it that he's saying? He's trying to say, like, wow, what a great thing. Uh, wow, I should be lucky like that. What do you mean you should be lucky like that? You should have that merit. This is an obligation. You don't find anyone anywhere that someone should say, wow, it should be my portion for those who reach me. You have to read Kriyashma. If it's an obligation, what exactly is Rabbi Yaisi saying? So the Maharsha explains that perhaps this is in order to encourage people, to push them to do it. In other words, he wanted to make it a great emphasis in order to encourage them. It says the Rebbe, this is that Rebbe doesn't seem to agree with this Pirush of the Maharsha. Why? Because the Rebbe said this is true. In other words, when do you use this type of encouragement? Only when it comes to something which is not the letter of the law. Only when something is in the in this in the gather, in the category of a hidur mitzvah or a chumra, a stringency, or that can extra add it on to the mitzvah, an add on to the mitzvah. Then you try to encourage people to push them to do it by highlighting how special it is, how important it is. But if something's an obligation, why would Rabbi Yossi have to, have to say this? Why would he say it? What is he saying exactly? He says, the Rebbe, here's the explanation. We'll understand Rabbi Yossi's words. The fact that Olam Haba, that we say that when, when Mashiach comes, there will be, quote, no eating and no drinking, it doesn't mean that the body is going to lose its importance. The body of a Yid will never be lost. On the contrary. On the contrary. As we'll soon see. The body is the, is the paramount importance when Mashiach comes. But rather what it's saying is that the nutrition of the body, meaning the life of the body, the energy of the body, will come not through physical food and physical drink. And as we know, in Hasidus, Actually, we paskin. We go according to the opinion of the Ramban that holds that Olam Haba, what is the real Olam Haba? What is the definition of Olam Haba? That's after the resurrection of the dead. After, it's the Olam Atchia, which is going to be Neshama is Begufim. In other words, the ultimate state of the existence of the world is Dafka when the Neshama comes back in the body. So the body is the highlight. However, but it's not going to get its nutrition from food and drink as it does now, but rather from a higher spiritual source. Says the Rebbe, now that we understand this, we can answer the following. This explains, we can answer the question, why is there a need to eat something? Why not not eat anything at all? Since this Sa'uda, this meal corresponds to and is representative of the Asid Lavoi, now what will be there? There will be the goof, the body will be then receiving its schar, its ultimate reward. And therefore, the body now has to feel it a little bit. The body now has to also get a taste of it by having something to eat. However, at the same time, also we highlight the idea of, quote, there is no eating 
ain't boy achila, ain't boy shtia, and therefore there's no bread. Moreover, says the Rebbe, as we see this, just as a, as a proof of this, we, in Chassidus it's brought down that the whole idea of this Su'uda Slivyasan and the su, and the Shoir Habar, this great Su'uda of the Livyasan and Shoir Habar is not metaphoric, but rather it's literal. It's going to be a Su'uda Gashmi, it's an actual Su'uda, physical, physical meat, physical flesh of these two mammoth uh, beings. So we see that the idea is that the goof will be eating them. There will be a goof. There will be a body. And that's why we have to, again, enjoy some food, albeit not bread. And a little deeper level, says the Rebbe, the idea that the, nisham, the, the ultimate state, the ultimate schar, the ultimate reward that will be la'asid lavoi, is dafka nishama beguf, dafka when the nishama comes back in the goof. Why is that going to be? Because when Mashiach comes, there will be nizgala, will be revealed will be privy to the greatness of the goof over the neshama. And this will be to the extent that the neshama will now, now that the neshama gives energy to the, gives life to the body. When Mashiach comes, will be the reverse, the body will give energy to the neshama. And according to this, we can understand that the reason why we do need to eat something is to emphasize the body, to emphasize the myla of the body, the greatness of the body, to express that even more the aspect, this, in other words, expresses even more, and even in a greater manner, the aspect of L'Asid Lavoi, that what's going to be when Mashiach comes. And now we can appreciate better the actual words of Rabbi Yaisi. He said, Yehi me it, should my, it should be my portion from those who eat in this Surah. In other words, he said, I want to have that special portion Somebody who should be able, you want to encourage that you should actually be able to eat in this Suda. In other words, if you have only perhaps a very primitive uh, idea of what will be La'asid Laboy, one will not be able to eat because one looks at it and says there's no eating. But now Rabbi Yisi was encouraging us, he was prompting us that we should be able to eat in this Suda, meaning we should have enjoyment. Remember, according to Allah, if you don't have enjoyment in eating, you're not allowed to eat. Not only you don't need to eat, you're not allowed to eat. He says that one should enjoy eating, but eating something. Not eating bread, but eating something small. And that true, will truly in, and express, and in the ultimate manner, the true greatness of the body as it will be. This is why the Rebbe Rashab quoted Rabbi Yaisi, because since Rabbi Yaisi is saying, Yehei Chelki, it should be my portion with those who eat. In other words, like we just said, you should have pleasure in the eating, eating something small, notwithstanding the fact, or, sorry, in spite of the fact that it says, Loi, Hayoim Loi, today not. This gave the Koyach that we should be able to also eat something. And not only it doesn't diminish from the greatness of what we are expressing in this Su'udah, but like we explained, it actually brings it out even in a greater sense.